Hey, what is going on everyone? Happy quarantine. In this video, I'm going to show you how to upload data into Postgres data tables using PSQL. So PSQL is basically a command line tool that will let you run commands from the terminal and it will let you do just about anything in Postgres. So you could update a table, you could select from the table down into your um, down to your local machine if you wanted to. Uh, but what I find it's really, really helpful for is uploading data uh, into your table. So that's what we're going to show right now. And this is going to be really helpful for you for any project you want to do in the future. Once you get a feel for how this is done, um, it can be real, real quick from having a raw data set to having something you can query and use as a back end for web application or whatever you want to do. So we're going to try and make that crystal clear for you and uh, hope you enjoy. So the process we're going to follow is going to be to first find the data, and I'll show you the raw data that we're gonna use in this tutorial, and then for the rest of the whole Mastery and Postgres series, uh, as well as next we'll have to create the table in Postgres. So we want a empty data table that we've defined all the fields for that we can then load data in. And then I'll show you how to load the data in with uh, PSQL, and then if you're following along at home, you'll be good to go for the remainder of the lecture series. So all right, so we'll start off with identifying the data sets that we're going to be using in the video. Um, you can see here we're on the USDA website and we've got some food data that we're going to download. It'll provide a lot of uh, good examples for us. So basically how I got here, um, FDC, oh man, it's a crazy URL, but basically uh, search for USDA food data sets and you should eventually get to the download data sets page. And uh, from here, it's actually really easy. They're all in CSV. And what I'm using for this tutorial is the branded foods data set. Uh, all right, so if you're following along, just go ahead and download this data set and unzip it, and then we'll get right to the next section. So here is where I unzipped all my data to. Um, this is all again from the branded foods data set. And our next step is gonna be to open up SQL Workbench, which we had opened in, uh, in, the, in the previous video when we created the new uh, database in RDS. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open that up right now. And you can see I've started my create table statement. So in Postgres, it's very, very easy to create a table. Um, it's just create table. Well, you do need to name the table. So in this case, I'm gonna call it all lowercase foods. Is it food or foods? Uh, whatever the name of the CSV, I'm gonna keep it the same. All right, so it's gonna be food. So our, our table name is gonna be food. And, uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just open up the CSV. I've got it open here. No, oh, that's not it. Uh, I've got it open here. <laughs> um, so with this, we're gonna be able to see the different kind of field names and see what data types we need to declare in our table. Um, and you can't always do this with CSV, but it's always a good idea. You can use something like Python, uh, maybe just get the first five rows and get a good idea of what kind of fields you have. Um, there was some documentation with this data set, but they don't really tell you exactly what kind of field types they are. So I've had to sort of extrapolate a little bit myself. Um, but one thing I am gonna look at with this uh, documentation is the FDC ID, which it does say is uniquely permanent identifier in this data set. And you can see that it's used throughout as an ID. So we can be comfortable setting this as the primary key of our food table. Um, and then for other tables that you don't have the FDC ID, um, for all other food tables, you should not declare the primary key and Postgres will go ahead and declare one for you. So let's go ahead and create this table and we're going to start by looking at all the different fields. Um, so you can see there's five fields um, and one is blank, but we'll go ahead and just keep that in there um, just in case uh, we need to fill that in later. So we'll go ahead and create table and I'm just going to put these side by side. Move my mug out of the way. All right. And I'm going to create table food and declare this first uh, column here. So this is FDC ID. And so now we need to tell it what kind of data type, uh, data type it is. Um, even though this is a uh, primary key, it still wants you to tell you what kind of data type. So I'm just going to say int. And then um, we wanna make sure this is never null because this is gonna be our primary key. So I'm also gonna say not null. And then I'm also gonna declare it the primary key. 
All right, so next is data type. And this looks like um, some sort of var car type thing. Looks like I could have different values, but they don't seem like they're gonna be very big. Uh, but just to be safe, I'm gonna, and since this isn't you know production or anything, we're not too worried about size, I'm gonna call it a var car 300. Um, so if you're not familiar with that, var car uh, means variable uh, character. So basically you can have characters that are um, a variable length, but up to the size of 300 digits. Um, and you're, you can do a, a different number in there to give a different maximum size. So it'll save space if you do a smaller size. Um, description, I'm gonna also do a var car 300. Now food category ID is blank in this. And my guess is that in the future, other data sets might have like an integer in there because it's an ID. Uh, but if I declare an integer and it tries to read in a uh, blank field, it's not going to like that. So I'm going to call it a var car. And as an ID, it's not really going to make a big difference. You're just going to be joining on it. Um, so it can always convert an integer into a var car, and that's not really a big deal. So I'm just going to give it a var car 100 just to cover all our bases. Uh, and lastly, we have a date. So we have publication date, and that's going to be a date type. All right, so let's see how that works. And we created our food table and then SQL Workbench, I don't have the auto commit um, setting on. You can do that if you want, but for me, I like to be able to roll it back up. Oh. So I'm gonna put an end to that create table statement and then I'm gonna go ahead and commit here. So now we've created our table successfully. We are halfway through this whole process. It's uh, not really that bad at all. And now we're gonna use PSQL to go ahead and load it in. So I'm gonna search here in Windows for PSQL. So to download PSQL, just Google download, uh, Google PSQL, install whatever for your operating system. And if you're in Windows, you need to manually add it to the path. Uh, but once you do that, you can just hit PSQL, type that in and it'll come up like this. All right, so this is a spe specific shell for PSQL. Um, so basically you wanna load it in as a program. Um, but if you add it to your path, you should also be able to use it from the command line as well. Um, I'm not really sure. I always just use the shell command. Um, regardless, so here we are. The first thing it's going to ask me for is the server. So what server, what host is it connecting to? Um, so you remember when we connected with SQL Workbench, we had like this super long string to connect. Um, it's kind of like that, but what we're, the only thing we're going to use is this host name. Um, so we're not going to give it like a long string like this. It's just going to be the host name for the server. And that's the host name is this part in right here. But if you want to find it in RDS, um, I'm on the test DB page that we made uh, last time. And it's also the name of this endpoint right here. So I'll just copy it straight from that endpoint for this uh, tutorial. And if you do this a lot, you notice that a lot of these are very similarly named. So if you're creating a bunch of databases and they all seem to sound the same, then don't be freaked out. That's just how Amazon does it. All right, so hopefully that was copied correctly. Test DB, um, bunch of letters, and then US East 1, RDS, AmazonAWS.com. Now, if you remember in the last video, we actually named our database Postgres. We had a d uh, database identifier was Test DB, but it wasn't Postgres. We didn't declare it, uh, so it was just the name was already Postgres. So in, uh, in the PSQL, you can see that it gives you a default value there in brackets. So if you just hit Enter, so it's going to enter those default uh, values. Uh, same for the port 5432, which is standard for uh, Postgres. Now, if you followed along in the older video, um, you can remember that we had the name of master class PG as our username. And everything checked out. It asked for a password. That means it was able to test a connection and request the password. And so we'll go ahead and give it the password. All right, so now I'm connected. I'm connected to the same database right here that we created the table in. And now it's time to go ahead and load in the data. So one nice thing about this data is it's already in CSV format. Um, you can load in just about any kind of data, but you're gonna have to use a lot of parameters in the PSQL um, to do that. But in this case, uh, I'm just gonna keep it real simple and load in with CSV. So I'm doing this backslash copy to tell it to copy the data. And first I'm gonna give it the name of the table. And now I'm gonna say from, and then I'm gonna give it the absolute path of my data here. 
Uh, you can see it right here. So it's on a C drive. If you're following along on Windows. Data sets, SDA MAR 2020, and then food.csv. So we do that on all with one big string. And then I'm gonna tell it that it's a CSV, so comma separated. Um, and if you have any kind of weird quotes or delimiters, you can do both of those. You could do something like uh, delimiter, delimiter, and then comma. But for here, it, it it's gonna infer that based on the fact that I say CSV. And then also extremely important is to declare that it has a header. So if you don't declare this, it's gonna try and read in that first line and uh, that could really mess up with your uh, data types. So copy foods from our data set, CSV header. Oh, foods does not exist. All right, well, that makes sense because the, the table name was actually food, uh, not foods. So we'll change that and we'll go ahead and copy food from our local data set. And this is always the part where you wonder what's going to go wrong, what, what kind of error it's going to find. Ah, perfect. Almost like I've done this before. Um, so go ahead. So now we've got the 260,000 rows copied into our database. And if we want to go ahead and just test that, just pull 10 rows and you can see, looks like uh, the right fields were copied into the right, right um, locations. Um, so a couple other little notes, if you had a data set and you wanted to copy in just a subset, like let's say in our CSV, we only had the first three fields. We only had FTC ID, data type and description. Then we could also declare which uh, columns we want to copy into. And so you could do something like copy um, FTC ID, data type and, and description. And then that would load in data into just those uh, tables. You're still not gonna be updating tables. These would be new records, but they'd be blank in everywhere else except for these records. Um, so we could have done that and that's something to keep in mind. And you can see how you do it is just to uh, have a uh, parentheses after the, uh, well, it's actually after the name of the uh, table. So yeah, you put it right here, parentheses, uh, and then you'd be able to load in data that way. All right, so it's it's all pretty straightforward, um, and I will go ahead. The code to create the tables is going to be uh, uh, available on GitHub, and uh, I will go ahead and also load in. We're going to load in, remember, the food nutrient table and the branded food table. So we'll do that. You do that, and uh, we'll take a break, and we'll see you back in the next video where we will get into some different kind of Postgres indexes.